What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Magic Dads Podcast. My name is Blake. I'm here with Stefan. Hi, hello. You are here with me. Well, in spirit, not in body, but in mind. This the this, this small wall is in between us. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, man? The the miles that have driven us apart over the last two days. Man, we got to spend Saturday doing uh that broadcast. thing that thing that we love to do so yeah. much we did broadcast at, it was fun. at game castle um what a tournament uh wild buddy luke took it down absolutely congratulations Way to go, luke. luke with uh with yog yog yeah. Moth, the yagas the mirror match in the finals too complicated for what my brain. a hur, hur, hur. <laughs> that yeah i don't want to play that mirror ever no it was it frankly taxing watching it uh I yeah i had a i had several meltdowns <laughs> trying to follow the lines were like dueling god moths. laying on the floor twitching yeah <clears throat> is there a more quintessential spider-man pointing at spider-man than two yogmoths on the battlefield at the same time no i don't they, think there is it's they super protection weird. from each other too it's it's super weird and it's like it used to be uh, uh what is it called uh platinum angel looking at yeah. platinum angel oh yeah this is so much more it's complicated than that. <laughs> yeah. Sick. So right. today we are going to talk about something that is very, very important to me personally. Yeah. And that is proxies. Yes. Why which, did you roll your eyes? No, I was just checking the checking my light. You're checking your lighting, making yeah. sure you're still you're still glowing. You're coming through bright and sunny. So proxies I, like this was represented often when we were kids. And I think even now by taking a basic land into Sharpie. Right. And writing the name of the card on right. the land. Yep. Like that's the most quintessential. Like, right. Write that bad boy on there. There you go. The cards in your deck now. Yeah, you don't and, you don't need the two or three or thousand uh, dollars to buy that volcanic island. Uh, mm -hmm. You can just write volcanic island and zoop, there you go. Now yep. you have a volcanic <laughs> island. So uh, let's talk about why proxy. I am 100% behind uh, proxying because it allows people to enjoy a format without having to break the bank. Correct. So if I want to uh, play Canadian Highlander and I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to buy Moxin or Ancestral Recalls and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. I can I can just proxy those cards, uh, shuffle them into my deck, and I can play a game of Magic. And that doesn't hurt me. It certainly doesn't hurt the person that's proxying the cards. And right. it brings more people into our community that otherwise would not be able to enjoy the format for mm -hmm. what it is. A fantastic format. There are a lot of places that have that allow proxies, yep. but there's an asterisk, right, where they say we allow proxies up to 10. Why is that different for us? Basically, what you and I discussed is that we want to remove as many barriers yes. from people as possible. And yes. one of those barriers, well, at least two of those barriers, are access to cards because of financial reasons or access to cards because literally possibility of finding them. Yep. Reserved list cards. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? These cards are expensive because there is a, <clears throat> a legal agreement that says that wizards cannot print these cards ever again. Yeah. And so those cards that are on the reserve list tend to be about a thousand times more expensive than other cards. It doesn't matter how mm -hmm. much they're played, how good they are. It is, it is strictly a supply and demand thing. Yeah, it's a collector issue. Yes. The, the people that often buy these reserve list cards aren't buying them because they want to put them in a deck and shuffle them and play a game with them. And, it, and it's effectively like lighting the card on fire in a lot of ways. Like, uh, yeah, totally. It, it just, you can never play with that card again. Uh -huh. And it's such a shame because cards were meant to be played with. Yes, they were. So the difference between uh, some of those other places that allow proxies in our group specifically is that we don't, we do not put a limit on it. You can Correct. play, this is a 100 card format, you can play 100 proxies. Hey, I can't afford a Black Lotus. You're telling me that I can just Sharpie or print out a Black Lotus to get in my deck and play with it? Yes, there are several people that play 100 card proxy decks in our in our group. We're the arbiters of, of the format locally, 
it, it's our responsibility to make sure that it is inviting and accepting as as many people as possible. Yep, hundred um, percent. But if the difference for us is having ten people show to a tournament and having thirty people show to a tournament, I'd rather have thirty. Yeah, hundred percent. And that that yeah. is exactly what it is. Like I want to have as many people consistently in this group showing up to do these things, engaging with us. Uh, mm -hmm. as possible and just like you said removing as many of those bars to entry as possible yeah. in mm -hmm. order to get more people in the more of those walls that we can break down yeah. even if it's just one person if we get one mm -hmm. more person because we broke down that wall yeah that's that's great i want that one more person mm -hmm. going back to uh places putting uh limits limits on them you can have yeah you can have x number of proxies mm -hmm. that really grinds my gears and rubs me the wrong way because sure. it, it to me, it seems like a half measure. Well, we do allow proxies. You can have 10 of them in your deck. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not solving a problem, really. No, it's not. In fact, it's creating a whole new problem. Now those people are going to get FOMO. They're like, okay, right. how, I, how can I work this out so that I can play this and still have 10 proxies? It's essentially looking at what the 10 most expensive cards in the deck are and like, can I still afford to play? And oftentimes what that does is they, they look at that and they consider how much it would cost and then they say, never mind. I think that a lot of the reason why um, organizers go with a 10 proxy limit is because they think if they allow full proxies, then nobody is going to spend any money and then we won't <laughs> be able to make any money off of single card sets. So. Um, people are just going to show up with Sharpie basic lands and they're going to uh -huh. do what they want and then they're going to leave. That is absolutely not the case. Yeah. Like I said, there are a few people that play fully proxy decks and we yeah. totally support that. We will we will gladly take them into our tournaments. We will take their entry fee for the tournament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that will go right into the prize support just like everybody else that paid to get in there. Well, you've never played Canadian Highlander before, so you don't have a deck. So you look at this 100-card deck, you go, okay, how many of these cards do I have? Uh, I only have 20% of this deck. Okay, so now I need 80 more cards. So that's like you need 80 more cards today. Right. It's like I don't have that huge chunk of change right now. I can buy mm. two or three or five or however yep. many cards today and then... Next week I can buy a few more, and then next week I can buy a few more, and then eventually I'll have a fully complete deck. And this is how most of our players operate. It is. They'll yes. buy two or three cards. At it a also time. it also encourages a whole lot of brainstorming because yeah. nobody is is barred to their collection. Ah oh, man, yeah, it, it feels like it's it's done so much for us. It does. I don't community. think that I don't think that we would have went. We started. In 2017, just the two of us. Yeah. It was just you and me. Just you and me playing. And now playing our, our Discord has 70-some people in it. Yes. We've got, we've got 30 people showing up to these quarterly tournaments. We've got people mm -hmm. all over the place. This, <laughs> would, have, this would have never grown to, yeah. the, to the space that it's in had we not allowed unlimited proxies. You got one guy. He shows up. He's got three, three, three decks. Mm -hmm. No real cards in any of the decks. It's three right. fully proxy decks. He shows up yes. with three decks. Okay. He has been one of the most, if not the most consistent player. Mm -hmm. He comes on Mondays. He's there on Sundays. He's at yep. every, he's at every quarterly. Whenever we have a random get together, he's there every single one. And now he yeah. owns a full deck. Correct. And half of another one. Never would have tried the format no. at, ha had we not allowed full proxies. He doesn't just have it. He doesn't have right. He doesn't have no. a bunch of disposable income. He's got yeah. twenty dollars a week. I'll spend twenty dollars here. I'll spend exactly. twenty dollars here. I'll spend twenty dollars here, and then eventually he's got the whole thing. And that's like that's sort of where you and I are now too. Like we have pretty vast collections, yeah. but we're spending probably the same amount of money. Oh, like, I spend I spend way no, yeah. more than that. <laughs> Thanks for watching and or listening to the Magic Dad's podcast. Yeah. I encourage everybody to proxy up a deck. Put some together you don't own any of the cards for. Proxy up a deck, try out Canadian yeah. Highlander. And and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you oh, hit that yeah. notification button so that we get to annoy you every time we upload a video. And we just want to remind you that <laughs> we're proud of you. <laughs> Charlie, take it away. Bye. Yeah. Bye.